We are here at the Max Planck Institute for Dynamics and Self-Organization in Göttingen, Germany. We are part of the EU HIT network. Uh, here we have three large facilities. One is the wind tunnel, which is behind me. Then we have the Göttingen U-Boat, which is a high pressurized convection facility. And then we have two experiments that allow us to do Lagrangian particle tracking. One is the crystal ball and the LEM, the Lagrangian exploration module. Our wind tunnel is, is very special in the sense that it can be pressurized to 15 bars with a gas. The gas that we're using is sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride is a very heavy molecule. It's at atmospheric pressures is six times heavier than air. So in a typical uh, experiment with an active grid, we get about a turbulence level that is comparable to the atmosphere. At the same time, the scales go for roughly half a meter all the way down to 10 micrometers. The U-boat is about six meters long. It is about five meters high. It looks like a U-boat because it has a turret. And in the air, what we can do is we can place convection experiments, like for example, this rotating convection experiment. Uh, we then take a, a turret and close the whole uh, system, and then we can pressurize it up to these 15 bars. By this, again, we get very high Rayleigh numbers. In that case, what matters is the temperature difference. And again, of course, the kinematic viscosity. So we have very strong turbulence level in the heat transport experiment. We produce one of the highest Rayleigh numbers in a laboratory that have been achieved so far. A third experiment, which is currently not in the U-boat and not in the wind tunnel, are our Lagrangian exploration modules. One is using water, which we call the LEM. And the other one we call the crystal ball. It's a sphere made of plexiglass and looks like a crystal ball. In both of those experiments, we can study the Lagrangian dynamics of particles. So we can look at particles in the, for example, in the wind experiment, what could also imagine to put in some flies and see how flies react to a turbulent flow. Or you one can ask, uh, how is our rain droplets formed? Um, how are the collision probabilities for, for heavy particles? What is the settling velocity? There's a whole range of many interesting experiments one could do. So there's a lot of opportunities here to investigate uh, very carefully natural phenomena, but at the same time, very fundamental phenomena about turbulence.